Bruce is much more of a Japanese style performer. You know, one of the one of the rumors is that you know Bruce met Shintaro Katsu, who is Zatoichi, and Shintaro Katsu told Bruce uh, before Bruce did uh, Fist of Fury, he said, "Bruce, the way that you make your fights really work is by adding in what's called ma." So you talked about humor in the martial arts. One of my favorite, and I think one of the funniest scenes is in uh, Return of the Dragon in the back, when they're in the back of the uh, restaurant and the guy's trying to use the nunchuck yeah, and he's yeah. whacking himself yeah. and he's trying to copy him. I hope, and that guy wasn't an actor, I think. I think there were like a bunch of some guy's friends, but I have to say the guy, I don't know if he thought of that or what, but he literally was the the the. But for me, I always laugh when I see that scene. Yeah. So like, I don't know, natural and uh, I don't know. It's funny because as a, as a viewer, you don't even have to know what nunchucks are for that joke to work. Yeah. Like that, that joke works because it's just anatomically correct, right? It's like, and it's something that you wouldn't think of as an audience member. I mean, as an audience member, you're sort of like used to Bruce doing the nunchuck thing, right? So you're expecting yeah. that. And it, I imagine, I imagine, I could be wrong, that Bruce was behind that decision. I mean, he directed the movie. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, he knew he knew exactly what the audience expected, right? And he's a natural comedian because yeah. he knows exactly what the audience is. He's like, okay, they think he's going to do this. Okay, no, what, what happens when you actually pick up a pair of nunchucks and you start swinging? You hit your nuts and you hit yourself in the forehead. <laughs> You're going to do that, and the audience is going to get it. And he's right, you know? That's like, uh, and that's, that's something about, about Bruce is that he... You know, he knew he knew how to play the audience, 100%. Um, he knew how to frame kicks. He knew how to he knew how to shoot. He knew how to perform everything. Uh, he he didn't even have to like. I mean, I would say that like his kicks were not up to snuff when he first started. He sort of learned this as he went. He watched like Big Boss. He's pretty raw, but before that, even in a, a like. A, I was going to say Batman, Green Hornet. And Green Hornet, his kicks are really basic, right? But then when he goes to Hong Kong, he starts work, work, working with Lo Wei. You know, he had been learning the kicking in L.A. from these Americans. A lot of Americans who had come over and come from, like, Vietnam, like Chuck, and these guys that had brought kicks from Korea. And Bruce was figuring out how to shoot these things. Because in America, they weren't really shooting kicks. They weren't even making kick movies. Nobody was doing kicks in movies. I'm sure Bruce saw an opportunity there. And he probably knew that people, okay, well, people are expecting, you know, the chop sake, kung fu stuff. People are expecting that. Okay, but when I put my kick up here, it's going to it's going to do something to people. And he was right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure um, Van Damme had to have been heavily inspired by Bruce Lee because Muhammad Kesey, Van Damme's best friend growing up, you know, who I interviewed and talked to quite a bit told me they used to sneak in the theater as kids and watch the Bruce Lee movies. And we had a movie theater next to us. Oh, nice. Uh, but we didn't have the money for So oh, okay. <laughs> our parents were giving us a little bit of money to go, but we wanted to go every weekend, you mm -hmm. know? We uh, just loved movies from very little, you know? And then, uh, of course, Bruce Lee. And you'll see a lot of the, the poses and all that stuff that, that Bruce, and the noises. There's only like two guys you could think of that I could think of in martial arts movies who make these really iconic karate noises it is it's bruce lee and it's van damme it's, it's yeah, nobody else really you know hey right yeah, yeah. um and so was Bruce Lee like an inspiration to you at all? Because you haven't really talked about Bruce much, aside from just, you know. Yeah, you know, the, the only Bruce Lee movie I ever I ever saw growing up was Enter the Dragon. And I saw that when I was young. And that's a horror movie, right? The end of that movie is scary. And as a kid, I was like, oh, I don't want this Bruce Lee guy. He's scary. Um, he never really inspired me uh, until much later. Um, I think I, I got back into watching Bruce's movie. And, you know, like the, also the the... The versions that we had growing up were these full screen 
mm-hmm. pan and scan dubs that are just embarrassing. I, I, I know some people think that they're kind of fun, but I just, I hated watching movies like that. So then I got a, I think, I think, I don't know, maybe it was Dragon Dynasty or someone who released the Bruce Lee movies later in the, the 90s or something and they were widescreen. I got to finally watch these things in their original format. And, uh, and I, I, I think, you know, you're talking about the 70s, which is a different, different kind of era. I grew up on the fast paced Hong Kong stuff. Mm-hmm. And Bruce is, Bruce is much more of a Japanese style performer. Ooh. You know, one of the, one of the rumors is that, you know, Bruce met Shintaro Katsu, who is Zatoichi. He went to Toei Studios or, or Shintaro came to Golden Harvest, one or the other. They met. And Shintaro Katsu told Bruce uh, before Bruce did uh, Fist of Fury, he said, Bruce, the way that you make your fights really work is by adding in what's called ma. Ma in Japanese is the pause. It's sort of the anticipation. Mm. Hong Kong movies don't really <clears throat> use ma. They don't really utilize the anticipation. It's sort of like rapid fire and musical. Sure. It's like a picking opera, right? Like Beijing opera. It's like dang, 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 dang. You kind of keep the flow going. It's a flow state. It's very like intoxicating. Uh, but you compare that to like a Japanese film where ma is everything, like the buildup is everything because everybody's going to die. <laughs> That's the buildup. <laughs> you know, if this, if this sword comes out, everybody dies. So let's talk it out. Let's get And then it's really tense. And then when the sword comes out, everybody dies. And so that was Bruce's style. And so Bruce's films, you know, even though he's got, even though he's got a lot of, you know, Hong Kong performers that he's working with, um, it's a very Japanese style of action film. You know, nobody was really making movies like that in the 70s in Hong Kong. Mm, yeah, that's, that's an interesting um, insight. Were you, were you ever inspired like by the uh, the Japanese swordman uh, movies of the 50s and like way back when the guys really were yeah. still training like they were going to fight somebody with a sword? You know, like- you know, I never appreciated those until until much later in life. Because, again, I was raised on that. Da, 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 da. I was raised in the Beijing opera style. Cantonese films, right? And uh, and then like, and I was raised on Arnold movies too. It's totally different than a Chambara <laughs> film. Um, and it's like they're their own art forms. I never quite understood Chambara uh, samurai films. Never understood like what the big deal was. Like why 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 all this waiting around? Like why why are we trying to talk? Why don't you guys just fight? That was what I was thinking. <laughs> Um, then two things happened. First thing that happened was when I did Blindsided, I took an Iaido class, a Japanese sword class. And I learned what is involved in drawing and cutting. And that's all I did for all the class. It was, you know, you sit kneeling and you just draw and cut and then sheath. Draw and cut and sheath. Sometimes you do the triple, you know, draw overhead and then wipe. And that's all I did. I sort of learned and then, um, you know, tried experimenting at my house and um, cut my finger open. And I realized like, oh, this sword, if it touches anybody anywhere, if it cuts two inches deep, that person's going to die. So that taught me one thing. And the second thing was when I was doing motion capture on a game called Demon Souls. I did mm, the protagonist. The game, yeah. Did the main yeah. Did the main character. And that's a Japanese game. And I had been doing God of War for two years before I did Demon Souls. And so I thought I was like the expert mocap guy. So I go in to do Demon Souls first day. And I'm like, I'm ready to do motion capture. And they say, okay, well, first move is the sword cut. So I did it kind of like Kratos, like rah, a really big move, a lot of character. And the director's like, no, 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 no. You need to learn how to move in a Japanese way. And I was like, whoa. My, I had a Keanu Reeves like <laughs> mind moment. Whoa. I was like, what does that mean? So I spent a year learning how to move in a Japanese way, whatever the hell that means. Right. And what that meant ultimately, it was like a very like gradual anticipation, like trying not to show your cards before you do an attack. And then when, when you actually do the attack, you just get through the hitbox, hit an end pose, and then go back to your idle pose. Hmm. And after doing that for a year, I thought, okay, I can move like a Japanese guy. And then I watched a Chambara movie and I understood it. 